Let's talk about coach companies. They say they haven't received the same financial support from the government as bus companies in order to cover loss of earnings during the coronavirus pandemic. The Confederation of Passenger Transport says more than 20,000 jobs are under threat. It's calling for clearer guidance over when they can resume leisure breaks. Richard Galvin has this report. Across the UK, there's a fleet of 30,000 coaches, which provides employment for 42,000 people. But for months now, most of the nationwide fleet has been standing idle. Like at this company here in Cheltenham, nothing has moved here since March. And they'd spent £10 million on a new green fleet of coaches to cut emissions, all paid for through finance deals. We don't anticipate that income stream to return until March 2021 at the earliest and then probably only at a proportion of what we would have expected in our projections for next year. With fears the industry could collapse, drivers took to the roads recently heading to Parliament Square in London for a noisy protest to highlight their predicament. Their message to the government, keep us afloat financially amid all the uncertainty. Back at base in Luton, the mood was sombre. We can only go as far as we can, and uh, when the tide is up, it needs to go. And I don't want to give it up. I've been working 10 years to be where I am today, and to lose what I've worked for 10 years, it will be heartbreaking. In the offices of the Coach Hire For You company in Luton, they've seen bookings plummet, but are trying to keep going. It's really frightening that the number of businesses that could just easily collapse. Because if there is no income, how do you pay for offices and businesses like this, how do you pay for workshops and all the staff? We would normally have 60 people here, but if there is no income, we've got one job in our diary in, no in November, that's it. Dozens of coaches from across the north of England and the Midlands gathered recently in another protest at the situation. Officials say they need £62 million a month from the government to keep the industry afloat. The Treasury, though, has highlighted its job retention and furlough schemes and £10 billion of grants to businesses. But eight-year-old Theo, whose mother and father own Applegate Coaches in Gloucestershire, has written a letter to the Queen asking her to help persuade Boris Johnson to tackle the problem. Well, with the Queen, which I know he really like, I would like it to go through to Boris Johnson to say... Can we have a meeting, not a reply, but a meeting to meet with him so we can talk and say, right, why won't you help us and we need help? That's right. Because we're the coach industry, not the bus. That's right. Not bus, it's coach <laughs> industry. They're now waiting for a response. Richard Galpin, BBC News. Well, we can talk to Jenna Rush, who's the Managing Director at North East Coach Travel, and joins us now. Jenna, thank you very much for your time, especially as you can see it's raining there, so thank you for standing outside in the rain for us to, to talk to us this morning. Tell us what's happening at North East Coach Travel. Um, basically, we're the same as every coach company in the UK. You know, 98% of the coaches are parked up, and they have been parked up since March, and that is likely to stay that way until Easter next year. We're a seasonal industry and we rely on our busy summer months to help make our winter bill, our winter payments. And unfortunately, we're looking at an 18 month long winter and companies will not survive that. So what are you asking for from the government? Because it has provided the job retention scheme, incentives for companies to keep staff. Um, there are mortgage holidays that have been offered by the banks under the instructions of the government. What more do you need? Well, the job retention scheme has been a very welcome scheme um, but like I've just said for us we won't move until Easter next year you know we will be laying off and making staff redundant and this won't even happen come by the end of October for the furlough scheme ending this is going to happen now um, even with the bounce back loans you know we're taking on massive amounts of finance to finance these coaches and bounce back loans just aren't enough me personally on a normal month I would have £40,000 of outgoings and unfortunately bounce back's not enough and even with the Sybil's loan, we're taking on debt to pay debt and we're not going to be able to make those repayments back. Jenna, can you explain to me, because uh, I, don't, I don't know the coach industry, what, what are these outgoings? What are you paying for at the moment that costs so much each month? The biggest outgoing is the finance. Um, every company has invested heavily in their fleet, especially with the government introducing the clean air zones right throughout the country. 
Um, so when we're buying a coach, it's costing us between two hundred and fifty and four hundred thousand pounds. You know, we're making these repayments over a five-year period. As you can guess, the figures will be astronomical every single month, and we can't meet this finance. Um, as most coaches are paying between three and four thousand pounds every month, and we're just asking the government for support because coaches are being repossessed at the moment and what people won't know is we take personal guarantees on this finance so that because of the depreciation in the coaches that when the company repossess the coaches and the shortfall is there they're going to come and look to come after us personally and possibly take our houses so basically you have coach drivers who have taken out loans of say or up of loans to pay for a coach that's up to half a million pounds they're responsible for that debt now what are they doing? How yes. are they coping? What are they saying to you? Um, an, oper an operator that wanted to come to Blackpool um, unfortunately had his coach repossessed on that morning and now the finance company have said even though he owes £150,000 finance they have sold the vehicle on at £75,000 and they are going after him personally for the other £75,000 shortfall. He has messaged me and said his company is going into liquidation tomorrow and he is declaring himself bankrupt because he can't afford to pay that £75,000 back. It's, it's very, very sad times listening to the stories and there is going to be many more if government support doesn't come and it doesn't come fast because, as I said, people can't survive much longer. Um, the government has said, a Treasury spokesman has said, and, and, and I laid out some of these packages earlier, um, the P Treasury spokesman said uh, we've provided a generous and wide-ranging package of support for businesses. Uh, the job retention scheme has been extended till October. It's been going for eight months. We've introduced packages of other support measures. Um, and there's also been the announcement by the Chancellor, the second part of support for the economy through his plan for jobs, um, giving businesses the confidence to retain and hire and provide people with the tools they need to get better jobs. Do you feel your industry is in a position to do that? What will happen to your industry? We're absolutely not in a position to do that. Um, at the moment, the statistics show by, that by the end of this year, companies will be laying off 20,000 staff right across the industry, and those figures will raise before next year. I would just like to mention, when the government are stating we, they have made ac we have access to grants, that isn't the case for coach companies. We have been excluded from the leisure and hospitality sector, so only what they said was that the local authorities would use their discretion and only 15% of coach operators have had access to that grant so far. Jenna Rush, um, thank you very much for talking to us. I think you've painted a very clear picture about what's going on with the coach um, travel industry. Jenna Rush there from North East Coach Travel, standing out in the rain for us um, there.